this morning we have got an incredible lineup for you of people that are going to come and share this morning. And each of these women have got so much wisdom and love that they just want to pour out on you as they share today. Um, and I'm really thankful to God for each of them. So can you really give them a warm welcome as they come up? And also, as they're sharing, smile. You can say amen. You can heckle them if you want to. <laughs> um, but most importantly, encourage them as they come to speak today. I'm just going to pray um, as we go into our message now. Father God, I pray that as these wonderful women come and share, God, that you would impart something of your heart to us today, that we'd have open hearts to receive what you're going to say, Lord, and that you would bring hope and joy as each of these women come and lead us in this time together. Amen. Amen. So the first person I'm going to welcome up is Jan. Can you give Jan a big warm welcome? Hi. Today is all about women. And I was thinking as we were um, coming up to Mother's Day, I wonder what it would be like if we had to fill in a questionnaire before we were accepted as mothers. So, get ready. First question, physical stamina. Could you go from zero to 60 in three seconds flat in case you hear a scream from your child? I can answer that one. I can. I remember when our grandson was about six or seven, Lewis was out on his bike outside in our little cul-de-sac and he fell off his bike. And they got there so quickly that Lewis went, Grandma, you flew. <laughs> so I got that one. Next question, emotional stability. Are you prepared to be regarded as indispensable one minute and an embarrassment the next? Because that happens in teenagehood. Are you able to, de to hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst? Are you able to deal with unpredictable and sometimes volatile behavior with an air of calm wisdom. I didn't do that. Are you prepared to walk the floor with anxiety, cry with frustration, and laugh at absurd situations? Because there's been a lot of those. You need social skills. Are you able to organize parties and social gatherings for all ages? Because that's a must. Technical issues. What happens when a child comes up to you and says, the leg's fallen off? Or how my, my doll or my car won't work? Batteries. Can you fit a battery in a toy? That's a must. Education. Are you able to keep records of meetings, events, and help with homework assignments? Oh, I would have said no, but these days we've got Google of me, ladies. <laughs> the world's our oyster. I don't know, but I know a thing that can. Okay, we need nursing skills. Do you think you could be able to carry out care for minor injuries, for example, cleaning bodies, putting plasters on, deciding if professional help is needed, or whether a kiss it better will do. These are some of the things we do all the time, don't we, ladies? When we applied for the job of motherhood, we didn't think about what was involved, did we? We didn't think that, as well as all those attributes, 
We've got the cooking and the cleaning and the washing and the ironing and the shopping to be done. When God made women and mothers, he made a force to be reckoned with, didn't he? Yes. We, ladies, are strong and resilient. When we do feel weak, God gives us strength. When we are anxious, we receive peace. When we feel alone, then God provides friendship of others that can rally around us. And ladies, we all need people to rally around us, don't we? There's always times when we just need that hug from someone to help. And it doesn't matter what age we are. We can still come alongside. So don't be afraid, young mothers, to ask for a hug or just someone to go and have a coffee with. Motherhood is wonderful. It's tiring, demanding, sometimes thankless. But it brings a wealth of happiness, a wealth of love and an endless supply of hugs. So, if we did have to answer a questionnaire before we were approved as a mother, then I think all the answers can be answered by, yes, I can, with God's help. With God's help, we can do anything, can't we? I love what it says in Proverbs 31, where it talks about a woman of noble character. Sometimes I get a bit exhausted when I read that passage. But there's a verse in Proverbs 31. I think it will come up on the screen now. It says this, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. You know, we had all the children dressing up their mums in different outfits. And you know what God wants to clothe you with this morning is strength, with dignity, that you can laugh, that you can know that the joy of the Lord is your strength every single day. And that because of that, we can laugh without fear of the future. That God is with us in our roles as mums, in our roles as women, in everything that we do day by day, in your role as a dad, a grandparent, in every different aspect of who you are, God is with you. And he will equip you with everything that you need. What a great message that Jan has brought to us and shared from her own experience how God has helped her. So we are going to have someone very special coming up to share with us now. And this person, please give the biggest round of applause for this person. Because she's a very literal lady, but she is very confident. And God uses her to speak in a powerful way. So I'm going to invite Hope to come up now. And she's going to share with us. Hi, my name is Hope and I'm 11 years old and I'm going to be talking about Hannah, Samuel's mother. So, let me introduce you to Hannah. Hannah is found in the book of 1 Samuel. She was one of two wives of Elkanah. The other wife was called Penina. Though Penina had children, Hannah was the favourite wife. And between you and me, I don't think Penina likes this fact very much. So, she had five children after Samuel, three daughters and two sons. Hannah was one of six women that suffered from infertility in the Bible. So, now we all know more about her, let's have a look at her story. One Samuel, one verse 10 to 11. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the rest of his days of his life, and no razor shall be used on his head. 
So we're going to read the first little bit of verse 11 again. And she made a vow. She vowed. She promised. She swore that she would do these things, submit her son to the Lord. And that's how much she trusted God. And that's how much we should trust God. Think about it. She loves the Lord so much that she gives her son her miracle to God, just like he gave Samuel to her. Let's step into Hannah's shoes. You've been desperate for a child, weeping over it, praying about it, crying about it, being desperate for it. And you finally, you receive it. You receive that miracle. But then you promised, you fulfill your promise, you submit it to the Lord that you will give him up, not knowing if you'll have another miracle like it, if something will happen like that again. But she did it because she was loyal to God. Verse 15 says, Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I've not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. She loved the Lord, poured out her soul to him, and was loyal to her word. She poured out that so much. She was desperate, and yet she still gave him up because she knew that God had better things planned for him and that she could trust him. Hannah's a great example that we can trust our loved ones with the Lord and he will listen to your prayers and give you a hope. Hannah fulfilled her promise and gave her son to God, just like God fulfilled his promise and gave his son to us so that we could be forgiven and be a part of his family. Because of Hannah's obedience in giving her son to the temple, Israel had a wise leader through Samuel. When we trust the Lord, good things happen. Isn't it nice to have someone to talk to no matter what's happening? I sure think so. Wow. Wow, that was incredible. Incredible wisdom and hope. I just love the way that you've reminded us today that when we give everything to God, he will do what he has promised and that he's already gone before us. What a great reminder this morning. You know, if you're here in this place and you know you've got your own loved ones on your heart, maybe sons and daughters that have walked away, Or maybe there are things that you are just crying out to God for. Just like hope is so clearly explained today and and has spoken and shared God's word for you today. That as we give those things to God, we can put them in his hands. And he has an incredible plan and a purpose for each and every one of their lives. Should we just pray in this moment? I know that across this room there are people that have got people on their hearts, maybe sons and daughters, or maybe other people in your family. And just as Hope has shared about Hannah this morning, maybe it is that you've got your own personal grief, something that you're crying out to see changed in your life. Father God, let's pray right now that as Hope has shared, as you shared your word and explained through Hannah's life how she came before God, how she prayed, how she wept, how she interceded, how she clung on to the promise that she, as, she, as you answered her prayer, she also gave back to you what you gave her. That, and in doing that and putting Samuel into your hands, you raised up an incredible prophet over the nation of Israel. Father God, I pray this morning for each and every one here who has got maybe sons and daughters that have walked away or those that are on their heart, Lord, today. Lord, I pray that that reminder in that story today, that as we give you our children, as we put them in your hands, Lord, you have got a plan. You have got a purpose that's beyond anything we can ever ask for or imagine or explain. And Father God, you are going to raise up sons and daughters who will know and love you, that you are going to draw people back to you. Father God, we thank you for a reminder this morning that you are in control that you are faithful, and that you are a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Hope. Now we're going to get ready for our final speaker this morning. So please give Liz a really warm welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. That really is a wild moment, wasn't it? 
<laughs> I'm still shaking with how incredible um, God is to use such young hearts for him, you know? Incredible. Um, I just want to thank the Lord uh, for mothers. Um, my mother in particular, um, every opportunity throughout my life, she has spoken about the Lord. Um, and she still does. She's 87 years of age, and it doesn't matter who you are, she'll tell you about the Lord. And it's fantastic, isn't it, that she will witness <laughs> to anybody who will listen. Beautiful um, a woman of God. But I want to tell you today about another <coughs> wonderful woman that came into my life um, when I married my husband, and that was my mother-in-law, Eileen. I think we... Oh, there we, there we are. Um, Eileen, yeah, beautiful, beautiful lady. She's no longer with us, but um, I just want to tell you a little something about her. Anyone who's ever known her will know that she was full of love. She was generous in her time and finances, and she demonstrated such a love and kindness because she trusted in the Lord and was in... Uh, she trusted in the Lord with everything that she did. She would often say, I would never have got through that without the Lord. She lived Jesus. She spent time with him. This is what I've witnessed. She sang and played the piano to him. Um, she read and studied scripture daily. She was a real amazing character. She was very, very witty. And that used to go over my head. My husband says, I still can't grasp a joke and I can't so don't tell me any um, but they you know they would laugh all the time and I'd laugh because they were laughing but she loved us to show Jesus and she loved to support people as well and um, I recall walking into the kitchen one day and she was ironing in shirts and I was sort of just you know talking to her and watching her and I thought I don't know any of those shirts they're not my father-in-law's but I just sort of kept it in my mind and it wasn't until she died, I went to speak to a neighbor, and um, the neighbor said to me, oh, your mother-in-law, always lovely lady. But she said, I'll never forget, we had just, I'd just given birth to my first daughter, and Eileen had come around and said to me, there's got to be something I can do for you. Um, you know, anything, you would like some food cooked, anything? No, all right. And they said, we're all right, thank you. Didn't really want to ask, I think, being new neighbours. But I, Eileen had said to her, when I think of something, I'll come back. <laughs> um, and she did. She thought, I'm going to ask to do their ironing. And she said, what a blessing that was. And she did it for months and months. Don't bring it to me, though, OK? Because <laughs> I don't follow in her footsteps regarding that. <laughs> When I came into the Waters family, I was welcomed with, with such acceptance. So when I was asked to say something today, this was the thing I knew instantly I had to share. Um, it's been great over the past few weeks, hasn't it? We've been studying the Book of Ruth in um, Bible study. And um, this being such a story about love, um, Ruth's love for her mother-in-law, Naomi's love for Ruth, and then Boaz, their kinsman redeemer, um, had such a love for, for Ruth and, um, you know, rescued that family, really. Um, it, it also brought another memory of myself and my mother-in-law. She used to call herself Naomi, and she used to call me Ruth sometimes. Um, but what she also called me was daughter. As our bond grew, she, she instead of daughter-in-law, I never used to get cards for daughter-in-law. It became daughter. It was so beautiful, you know, and, you know, loved and honoured her. But she loved and respected and loved me so much, you know. We lived together, actually, for 25 years in the same home. Um, my children benefited, but so did I. Um, and as family, when difficulties came, we clung to each other. Um, we supported and cared for one another. We prayed together. We laughed and we cried together. 
we, we would often say how we, how we were like Ruth and, and Naomi. Well, that's where that came. The Lord was showing me, um, showing me in an instant of the time. I had been grafted into the Waters family. Not made to feel like a stranger at all, but loved so well. Hannah said at the very beginning, you know, our purpose, isn't it, is to love well. And my mother-in-law, Eileen, loved well. Didn't matter who you were. <laughs> um, but I was adopted into this family. And as we know, we've all been adopted into God's family. From the beginning of, of, of the, before the foundations of the earth was laid, he knew who we were and he knew our purpose and he loved us. And he also made sure that there was redemption in it, isn't it? In Romans 8, so we have not received a spirit that makes you feel fearful, slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you and as his own children. Now we can call him Abba, Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Isn't it incredible that, you know, no matter where we are and or who we are, God loves us so, so much. And, and it isn't just love, it's the acceptance. He, um, well, he gave so much. He gave his son. He gave Jesus for our redemption. And I'll just finish with Galatians 4, because being grafted into something, being adopted into something, um, it isn't a piece of paper. It was the blood of Jesus. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us to, as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son, in our, uh, put the spirit of his son in our hearts, prompting us to call him Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Just as I have been grafted, adopted into the Waters family, I was not made to feel a stranger. I was fully, fully loved. And remember that too. You are a child of God, fully, fully loved. When we invite Jesus into our hearts, when we acknowledge him as saviour, he adopts us as his own. And he calls you son and daughter this morning. Powerful words. I just want to encourage us to have a moment together as we come to the close of our messages that we've heard today. We heard from Jan that God is with us, that he helps us, that he guides us and leads us in all of the different things that are involved in motherhood, fatherhood, in grandparenting, in all the different roles that we play as people. It reminded us through hope this morning that God has a plan and a purpose for our children, that he's got them, that he sees your heart this morning and those longings and those heart cries today. And Liz has reminded us afresh that we are grafted into God's family, that we are adopted as his children. Let's just take a moment as we come to a close just to pray and to reflect on what you've heard today.